We are Wooden Spoon Wargaming and welcome to the channel. With your host and professional hobbyist. We can be found across varying social media platforms here on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook and our own website www.woodenspoonwargaming.com Time zone appropriate greeting to you and welcome back to the channel and another community spotlight. This one is with Benji from Standfast Studios, an Instagram painter who I met last year at the Gibraltar GT and been following him ever since. His work is first class and his Instagram live videos are really cool. So sit back and listen to the interview. There's slight audio issues but I've managed to cut a lot of the garbled out because uh, I'm still learning at this. So bear with me and welcome Benji. Uh, yeah, sure thing. Uh, first off, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, I'm a 30 years young gentleman uh, living in Spain, uh, just across the board from Gibraltar. Um, you know, I'll, we'll probably get more into it later on, but I've been painting for a while um, and just kind of started uh, getting out into the, uh, what do you call it? The word escapes me. Instagram world? <laughs> yes. Instagram world and uh, painting for people. Commission painter is the word I'm after. <laughs> yeah, commission painter. Uh, I've been doing that for, for I'm pretty pretty new. So, yeah, it's all, it's all good fun. But yeah, that, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. So, mate, how this works is basically I will ask you a series of questions, which I ask everyone. And then at the end of it, I've got some questions which I have tailored towards each each person individually. And I hope you can bear with me for this. Sounds good. Okay. So how did you get into the hobby of tabletop wargaming? How do I get into the hobby? Um, well... As a young child, uh, my grandfather had uh, a model railway set, uh, and I was always fascinated by that. And when he said uh, he designed all the, well, terrain, I guess I'd call it. Um, so I was exposed to that kind of world as a child. Um, and then my brother picked up uh, 40K uh, back in the day, and it just it just escalated from there, really. Um, you know, I was really eager to see what my brother was up to. Uh, painting all the models, and that's what kind of drew me in. Yeah. So, what sort of hobbyist are you? Are you a painter, gamer, or a bit of a mix? A uh, bit of a mix, really. Uh, average painter, bit of a hoarder, terrible gamer. <laughs> yeah, a mix of all. So, what systems do you play? Are you 40k, AOS, or just you, or do you just stick to one sort of system? Um, I, these days it's pretty much just 40k. Um, I played the original Necromunda, uh, which DC, uh, from, uh, SM Battle Report still has that original rules book. So remind me to get it off him at one point. No, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, again, uh, DC from, uh, SM Battle Reports forced me into a couple of games of fantasy. Um, but yes, maybe 40k is, uh, is where I'm at. So when you were first starting out in the hobby, what was the thing that caught your eye? What what drew you in and, and sucked your money away from you? Um, terrain, for sure. Definitely. Um, again, you know, going back, my granddad making all the uh, train sets and stuff that, that, that got me onto terrain. I loved uh, the way it was done. Um, and then going into the GW stores uh, back in the day, seeing all those uh, battlefields all, all set up. Um, yeah, that, that drew me in straight away. Creating your own kind of little world, I guess. Um, I love that, yeah. So what advice would you give someone just starting out on the hobby? Or, if you had a time machine and went back in time, the advice you would give your younger self? Advice? Uh, put down the fork, I'd say, to my younger self. Uh, no, um, <laughs> in regards to 40k, um, definitely get inspired by other people, for sure. But never compare your work to others. Uh, just compare your work to yourself. Uh, definitely. I mean, you pick up a model, uh, you think you did okay, you move on to the next one. As long as you can see that you're uh, improving, that, you know. I, I find uh, some of my friends that paint, they, you know, they kind of give up. They're like, oh, I'll never be that good, you know, looking at all these fantastic artists on Instagram and, and all the stuff you see online. And uh, for me, yeah, that's the worst thing to do. So definitely just compare your work to, uh, 
uh, to yourself, not not other people, for sure. Have you ever had a, an extended break from the hobby, like a time out for a few years or other reasons? Uh, that, so, as a little kid, um, did Warhammer until I was about sixteen, uh, and then I left uh, the the hobby um, until I was twenty two, and I was like, oh. Yeah, I'm kind of in control of my own money right now, so I can kind of do what I want. <laughs> so that's what kind of brought me back, really. So how, so how did you get back into the hobby? Yeah, well, funnily enough, me and my brother were talking about um, 40k, or, you know, do you remember this, do you remember that, talking about it, and we were literally walking uh, past the GW in, in Cardiff, and uh, we were like, you know what, let's let's have a go, let's let's look back in, see what's changed. Um, this that, and the other. We we had like an intro game, and yeah, we we were hooked. Like just never looked back. What's the best part of the hobby for you? Yeah, there's a lot of things out there um, which I totally, uh, totally, really enjoy about the hobby. Um, but the main two for me is probably community uh, and creativity. Uh, definitely, the kind of uh, the blank slate that GW kind of gives you um, to just do what you want is incredible. And just the amount of friends and, and absolutely incredible artists out there, uh, just genuine people that you meet through the community. So, yeah, for sure, community and creativity, definitely. And on the opposite side, what's the worst thing about the hobby for you? The worst part? Uh, that's a tough one, you know. Um, to do with the gaming side, I, I, I think just generally they're all like, like cheaters, especially in games. Um, you know, you go to like a an event, or or you just down at your GW, and and I know it's a game to win for some people, um, but just cheating, yeah, that that ruins the the whole kind of ethic of the the hobby for me for sure. What keeps you in this hobby? What keeps me in the hobby? <laughs> Probably Shaggy from <laughs> SM Battle Reports making me uh, get all them uh, Ultramarines done. <laughs> No, um, for serious though, probably uh, the community again. Um, you know, just being able to hang out with some great guys uh, and girls, and um, just kind of pushing myself um, as well. Like that kind of, you know, you can do better. Um, practice the art. Um, you know, I, I really enjoy pushing myself with with the kind of boundaries of of uh, my painting and and uh, definitely my gaming needs improvement as well. But yeah, that's that's pretty much what keeps me uh, grounded in the hobby for sure. How do you deal with uh, a burnout, lack of hobby mojo, that sort of thing that stops your hobbying? Uh, burnout, uh, lack of hobby mojo, for sure. You know, it happens to everyone. Um, I had it a couple of times, um, definitely. But for me, uh, palate cleansers, um, you know, or, or new techniques, um, or even going out there and just finding inspiration, you know, Instagram, uh, YouTube, um, even like some movies and stuff. Uh, or, or TV shows, uh, you know, just kind of step back a bit um, and just find that inspiration again. Uh, I mean, for example, with the Ultramarines, um, I'm doing a big commission for, for uh, Shaggy for um, Palo Cleansers for sure. If, if I'm kind of, you know, I literally see blue everywhere, but I'll go back to Death Guard or something completely different, um, you know, to kind of like cleanse my soul, if you will, and then I can, you know, kind of get back to, to the ultra means or get back to whatever project that I'm on at the time, yeah. Has anyone inspired your hobby style or hobby life? Um, definitely some fantastic artists out there that have certainly inspired uh, my hobby style, uh, my hobby life there. So we've got, um, I'll put it into kind of categories. So the kind of clean uh, painters, um, you know, the lovely edge highlights, hardly any weathering at all. Uh, you've got Paul Norton, uh, Connor Richardson. Um, yeah, their work is absolutely incredible. That's something I strive um, you know, to come close to, I guess. Um, they're definitely uh, inspiring my hobby. Um, in regards to like damage, uh, weathering and terrain, things of that nature, uh, Thunder Wolfen on Instagram and uh, Shibboleth02. Um, I always get that wrong. Uh, but he does this kind of like cool uh, blind style. Um, his terrain's phenomenal uh, as well. It kind of... Um, he gets like a story uh, in your mind for like each piece he does, um, for sure. Um, little legend as well. Um, he, a fellow Washman, uh, big up the Wash. Um, he's a commission that has been doing it for a long, long time. Um, so um, I certainly looked into what, what he does uh, when when I thought about 
uh, commission painting. And speaking of thinking about commission painting, uh, my long friend, good old pal DC, uh, you can catch him on the SM Bar reports. Um, but egging me on and just saying, you know what, just just do this commission work. Um, you know, you really enjoy painting. Um, you're a decent standard. Uh, just get out there and get it done. So he's always kind of like been there, kind of forward me on to, to get it done. So, yeah, big big up to that man there. Um, but yeah, there you go. There's your answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, and another thing that um, another person, if you will, that inspires me um, for sure and, and certainly does help me out all the time is Josh uh, Blood Moon Painting on Instagram. Uh, he's incredible. Uh, painter and he, he's so knowledgeable so whenever I'm struggling with something or something's just not looking right you know he's always there so I can just quickly chuck him a whatsapp and say yo the same work and what do you think and, and he's, he's he's fantastic he'll just chuck me ideas and say you know try this try that uh, so yeah big big love for that guy uh, for sure what projects are you working on at the moment wow what am I not working on um, obviously ultramarines for sure um, yeah getting them done for Shaggy uh, my own death guard. Uh, I've got some Tau coming up. Um, I've got a gas call coming my way as well. And I'm always uh, tinkering uh, with uh, terrain ideas, uh, for sure. Uh, I've seen some of the stuff from uh, Chris Swines, I believe the gentleman's name is. Um, yeah, that's, that's really made me want to kind of look uh, at the terrain I have and the terrain I need and what I want to kind of put together. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, what, uh, that's what I'm working on. Do you plan out projects, armies, or do you get sucked into the trap of um, collecting everything? Yeah, so a bit of both, a bit of both, really. Um, I've kind of like limited the amount of stuff that I hoard now uh, due to a recent move, uh, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. Um, and um, yeah, I, I do kind of plan out uh, for my death guard, but um, a lot of the time now. Um, luckily, that's kind of uh, my decisions made for me uh, in regards to what uh, customers want in regards to commissions and stuff. So that kind of helps me out as well. Um, yeah. If your budget was unlimited, but you could only buy one army, what would it be? Oof, that's a tough one. Um, I'd probably combine two and be cheeky and say Imperial, the Imperium of some sort. It would definitely be. Black Templars uh, with a routine of like Inquisition. If I could, yeah, unlimited kind of funds, I would definitely go all in on on that for sure. What do you hope to improve with regard to your hobby in the future? Probably everything. <laughs> no, uh, I mean I'm learning so much, um, and you know, so to me, speed. Um, and metallic work for sure um, I haven't tried um, non-metal metallics I think you call it I haven't really tried much of that yet but that looks really cool um, something I would love to, to try my hand at um, yeah so pretty much just speed and, and, and metals and um, continuing to, to, to improve on everything really that's, that's what I hope to improve on anyway if my eyesight lasts. You spoke about a move from the UK to Spain. Did an international move affect your hobby? Oh, definitely, uh, for, for sure. I mean, when you live in Cardiff for uh, all your life um, and then you just put in your whole life into two suitcases, uh, me and the missus and, you know, we had dogs and all this side of the other, so you kind of like bring in them over um, to uh, Spain uh, slash Gibraltar um, definitely affected my home. I mean, <laughs> I speak about when I was uh, a hoarder. Yeah, um, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff I had. Um, a lot of it went into my mum's attic, which I had to kind of actually like extend <laughs> due to the amount of like 40k stuff I had. Um, just Warhammer in general. Um, and I think like packing life into two suitcases really makes you kind of think, okay, what? What do I need to focus on? What do I need to bring over? Uh, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for sure, like uh, many people, if you ever speak to them, like who live in in Gibraltar, close to Gibraltar, will say it's a it's a gaming paradise, and and it really truly is. I mean, meeting all these fantastic guys from uh, SM Battle Reports, like you know, that's where the home is. 
Um, and it's just a fantastic community with like incredible tables available. Um, yeah, joining all these huge like WhatsApp groups, meeting like all these people, um, really kicking off my commission pain as well. Um, you know, big thanks to 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 uh, SM Battle Reports and, and Shaggy for that. Um, definitely, but yeah, huge, huge, huge effect on my hobby. You're known for Stanfall Studios. How did this start? How did it start? Well, I was trying not to bore everyone. So, <laughs> um, originally, I was watching the film Tremors uh, with Kevin Bacon. Classic. Um, and right at the end of the film, Kevin Bacon says, well, it suddenly hit me. You know, Stampede. And they all laugh, and it's like a freeze frame. It's so cheesy. I was like, Stampede? Stampede Studios? That sounds pretty cool. So I did that for a bit, um, and then I realized that, like, you know, the name is there right in front of me. Basically, I'm a Grant, so uh, the family motto of Grant is stand fast. Uh, I'm big into family, um, so it was a no-brainer, really. Um, so I kind of, that's that's where the name came from, anyway, Stand Fast Studios. Um, in regards to how I got into commission painting, um, I love helping uh, my mates and, and, and whoever asked me for for any tips, you know, if I can help, I certainly will. That's the kind of guy I am. Uh, and then DC definitely egging me on, saying, you know, just just do it, just go for it. You know, what have we got to lose? And and yeah, that's that's why I decided. You know what? Cool, let's do it. Let's get into this whole commission painting thing, and it kind of combines everything. My love for the hobby, uh, my love for helping people out, and, and and my love for seeing people smile for the, the kind of work you do is, you know, gives you great satisfaction uh, if you've done a if you've done a tidy job and people enjoy it. You know. You're becoming well known for your work with SN Battle Reports and the beautiful Ultramoons army you've done for them has been playing in the background as we've been speaking. How did this come about? <laughs> Funnily enough, uh, with everything in life, um, when I first moved over, uh, as I said, I didn't have much in the two suitcases. I kind of had a box full of paints. I didn't have my desk set up or anything like that. And um, basically, uh, Pardo... Uh, one of the one of the main guys at SN um, gave me a demon prince who's like, you know what, do you mind painting this up? Because um, I, I assume like DC's in his ear, like, God, oh, give him a chance, give him a chance. So, you know, that kind of thing is, as he does. Um, so I painted it up and it was dog crap. It was awful, to be honest. Um, I don't know what it was. I don't know if like the pressure got to me or whatnot. Um, but yeah, it was it was shortly repainted, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, he's repainted it all bit, to be honest. <laughs> it's pretty bad, like. Um, but to be honest, then uh, DC spoke to uh, uh, Shaggy, uh, the guy over there, because he wanted his Ultramoons painted up. Um, and Shaggy kind of put his faith in me, I guess, and said, "You know what? Get this done for me." Um, and I did. So, so it's been absolutely huge um, to be able to have work that you've done uh, out there on such a massive YouTube channel as SM Battle Reports. Is is. Yeah, it, it got me stoked, and you know, it's, it's always spurred me on to, to become better uh, as a painter. Um, they still want to land me off for games because, yeah, I can't even spell my own name out, let alone play a game on a, on a YouTube video. So, yeah, huge, huge impact. Um, it's been an absolute blessing. It's a wild ride, and I, I want to continue doing it for sure. Has painting a completely different army during this commission? Because normally you paint a very dirty death card scheme helped you improve as a painter yes 100 percent, absolutely um going back to the whole how to keep motivated type thing uh you asked earlier uh in regards to that like palette cleansing and this and the other um with my death guards the, the feel i had for them was very much washes and dirt and weathering and you know they were absolutely bad um then this ultra Marines commission came along when when i had to start doing edge highlighting you know like well not used to edge highlighting. What is this edge, edge highlighting you're on about? You know, um, so it's definitely helped me improve. Um, always pushing myself as well. Uh, really thinking about more uh, in regards to the model, not just um, you know. My main focus are really kind of like weathering and filth. But now where I have to do pristine, uh, pristine lines, really think about the kind of damage that I'm putting on, shadows, color theory, all this that, and the other. Um, so it's a lot to do and then from that then uh, I've got a Tau coming up so it's going to be completely different again uh, you know so there's like a lot of blues which is a colour I didn't really paint before doing the ultramarines then the tower coming over that's going to be a lot of greens and purples um, so yeah just the exposure to all kind of different styles and different colour schemes and different looks and 
and trying to you know put across what the the customer kind of wants in the army um yeah yeah if you, if you want to improve your pain definitely uh, get into that for sure <laughs> okay mate last question thanks so much for your time would you ever turn down a commission because you didn't like the models or the paint scheme that was given to you no uh no, definitely not. I mean, I'll probably piss and moan about it because <laughs> that's the kind of guy I am. Um, but, you know, the the, the chance, uh, well, as I said, like variety definitely helps me grow. Uh, so even if I'm not like the biggest fan of it, um, I just see it as a challenge, as an obstacle to overcome and, and just do your best at it. So I would I would never turn someone down just for uh, just because I didn't like the models or paint scheme. Definitely not, no. And that's a wrap. So a massive thank you for Benji for taking part in this interview and for yourselves for listening to it. Hope you've enjoyed the slideshow as well for all the beautiful models he's done for the SN team. I'll put all the links in the description below for his Instagram for the SN page and their website and their YouTube channel which I'm a massive fan of as well and hope to catch you in the next Community Spotlight.